Hi, this is Gary Burrell, broadcasting from the Cayman Islands in the Caribbean. And today I want to consider uh, Narendra Modi and the erosion of critical thinking in India. Well, as you probably know, Narendra Modi has been recently elected as a Prime Minister of India in a landslide victory. The world's largest democracy is fed up with the corruption and the dynastic politics of elites. The Congress Party, which is the successor of uh, Nehru, well, that party has become ossified. A few decades ago, uh, the Indian people acknowledged uh, the Congress Party's leadership and its role in the struggle for independence. But now it seems that the Congress Party's time has worn out and the current frontman of, of Congress Party, Rahul Gandhi, let's be honest, he'll never have the popularity of his grandmother in the era. And let's also be honest that the fact that uh, his mother is Italian uh, doesn't help much. It may not seem like it, but this is in fact a big issue. Raul is not viewed as fully Indian by some people, and this plays neatly into the hands of nationalist politics, which is the language that Modi speaks. Despite his big failures as prime minister in the economy, and let's remember that he ran for the first time on a platform of uh, huge economic promises, well, despite all of that, uh, Modi remains immensely popular because, well, Nationalism is about blood and soil, not about rationality. And it seems to me that those who took him to power are more worried about making India fully Hindu than about reducing unemployment. It's good to remember that uh, Modi came out of the Rastriya Saya Semvak Sang, which is a Hindu nationalist organization known for some very aggressive stances. Out of this ideology emerged many representatives of the Bharatiya Yanata Party, the BJP, which is the current ruling party of India. The BJP does its best to moderate the voices of Hindu chauvinism and anti-Muslim sentiment uh, within its ranks. Within its ranks. Uh, the way they present it, they, they simply want to do away with what they call pseudo-secularism. That is, that in the name of secularism, uh, accommodating privileges to religious minorities while not granting those privileges to the Hindu uh, majority. Uh, the way the BJP party sees this, it's that it's very unfair. And they do have a point. I mean, religion in India seems to be as relevant as ever and the country is far from being secular. By constantly accommodating to religious minorities in many spheres of life, India does not fully achieve a sense of national unity. So the, the BJ party does have a point there. However, Modi himself has contributed very little to the secularization of Indian society. And I think that this ultimately has a negative effect on India's aspirations to be considered a major pleasure in the international scene. We can all admire India's increasing contribution to science and technology. <laughs> the stereotype of the Indian kid uh, who goes on to become an accomplished engineer or physician both in India and, and abroad is increasingly becoming a frequent reality. <clears throat> But it seems to me that were Moody to contribute with his, uh, to continue with his uh, nationalist agenda in the coming years, this stride towards scientific and technological achievements cannot last for long. Well, Moody has publicly promoted some wacky ideas that, in fact, have been part of Hindu nationalism for some time. Now, basically all forms of nationalism rely on some past glory of the nation. For instance, make America great again, right? Some of these past glories have some factual basis, but most are invented or distorted by nationalists. Hindus in India have plenty of real glories to exhibit because, as you know, the Indus Valley civilizations of previous centuries were truly admirable. But somehow, in the minds of many Hindu nationalists, 
these past glories are not strong enough to make a connection with current times. Sure, Indians may have invented the concept of zero, but Hindu nationalists want to claim intellectual pride over something more relevant to contemporary times. And thus, they make all sorts of outlandish claims about the presence of modern-day inventions in ancient Indian history. Modi himself has claimed that plastic surgery was invented in India because how can Ganesha's have an elephant's head in a mouse body? <laughs> he asked that question. Uh, other people have claimed that airplanes are mentioned in the Ramayana, which is one of India's most famous epics. Other claim that uh, in vitro fertilization is also present in the Ramayana. According to some Hindu nationalists, uh, Lord Brahma, which is one of the most important gods, Lord Brahma discovered dinosaurs. Some others claim that the internet is already referred to in the Mahabharat, which is another of the great Indian epics. I mean, it's hard not to laugh at all this. And some people even claim that the archaeological site of Mohenjo-daro is evidence of the use of nuclear weapons in ancient India. Well, perhaps this might be a projection of the BJP's pride in current nuclear arsenal. Anyway, it's all baloney, of course. In a sense, Moody and his nationalist flock are actually engaging in a game that was played long ago by Eric von Daniken. In an outrageous book, and the title of that book was uh, Chariots of the Gods, von Daniken set forth the hypothesis that aliens built the pyramids in Egypt, the, La the Nazca Lines in Peru, and the Moai in Easter Island in the Pacific. Uh, he seemed to be working under the racist assumption that non-Westerners could not have built such monuments. So Von Daniken brought aliens in in order to explain this and fill the void. Well, Hindu nationalists also seem to be under the same racist belief that non-Indians could not have invented the wonders of modern life. So what do they do? Well, very much as von Daniken, they bring ancient texts in and voila! They find obscure references in sacred Indian scriptures and report them as references to the invention of television or the internet or in vitro virtualization or whatever. Now, to be fair, this is not a game only played by Hindu nationalists. Uh, let us recall that some Muslims do flatter themselves in claiming that the Qur'an already foretells scientific theories about the expansion of the universe, the Big Bang, and so on. And very much as Hindu nationalists do, Muslims who read the Qur'an this way with a hindsight bias, uh, and the way they do it is that they proceed by finding in obscure religious passages confirmations of our current knowledge. And some Christians are also fond of playing this pathetic game, although in their case it tends to have more of an apocalyptic flavor, as in Hal Lindsey's preposterous 1970 book with the title The Late Great Planet Earth. In that book, Lindsay purports to show that the, prophecy, the prophecies of the biblical book of Revelation are coming true today, especially with modern technology. As the great Indian scholar Miranandula, Mirananda acutely observes, this hermeneutic approach is far more pronounced and accepted among Hindus than amongst any other religion. In Nanda's view, this may be because, unlike the outlandish claims of Muslims or Christians, Hindu nationalists enjoy some considerable academic support. Now, sure, there are creationists in America, but let's be honest, they are the laughing stock of intellectuals, especially of those intellectuals on the political left. By contrast, Hindu nationalists who make ridiculous claims seem to get the tacit approval of left-wing intellectuals on account of their post-colonial stance. Throughout colonial history, 
the West was deeply arrogant and dismissive of other civilizations. Unfortunately, many post-colonial scholars are too happy to give Hindu nationalists a free pass as a way to counter Western arrogance. Post-colonial and post-modern scholarship criticize science as a Western construct with no real legitimate claim to truth or objectivity, and thus they pave the way for Hindu nationalists to come up with their wild theories. Now, it seems to me that with this kind of mumbo-jumbo being publicly defended by India's prime minister, the country cannot endure for much longer in its scientific and technological development. Unfortunately, Moody is only a reflection of this trend, so it is a phenomenon with far deeper roots. However, Moody himself and politicians of all parties in India, as well as intellectuals both in India and abroad, they do need to be aware of their social responsibility and their pronouncements may make a relevant difference. India has much to be proud of and it has the potential for making even greater scientific contributions to humanity, but sadly, if nationalist irrationality gets in the way of sound critical thinking, that opportunity will be spoiled.